Good morning, mushrooms, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, brothers, sisters, mothers, misters, and to all my cousins out there around the world, it's time to plug in, get the train chugging. Ta -da! China is harboring a fugitive scientist at the San Francisco consulate. Ooh, yes, we've had harboring many times before, but a harbor is the port, the place where you park your ships because there's some sort of protection to protect the ships away from the waves so it's easy to load and unload and conduct trade. Move this into the more figurative sense, and to harbor someone or harbor something means to keep it protected, yeah? And to shelter it. And so China is protecting and sheltering a scientist at their consulate. Now, as you know, embassies and consulates constitute the soil or the territory of that country. And so the host country has no jurisdiction there. So that's why we get people like Julian Assange holing up and hiding out in various consulates and embassies in different countries. He or she, actually, I don't know, I've not read the article is a fugitive. If you are a fugitive, you are on the run. Or you could say you are on the lam. I was looking up the etymology of that and it's uh, unclear to be honest, but on the lam, on the lam or on the run is it means you are wanted by the law and you are trying to actively escape them. And so this person is running away from the law because well, they're functioning as a spy for China and so the US government would like to talk to them. But, um, yeah, and China is protecting them because, well, they were helping China. All right, that's that. And so that is increasing the tensions between U.S. and China and some great visual vocabulary and even auditory vocabulary here because the tensions have continued to ratchet up following the forced closure of Washington by the consulate in Houston, blah, 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 to ratchet something up. Um, almost always with up, meaning in increase, right? And a ratchet is that tool, usually with a socket, and you can click, 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 and then tighten it up, and then click, 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 and tighten it up. And so it's, it is a form of a wrench in a mechanical system which allows you to turn things in one direction, but then it won't go back down in the other direction. So we use it for tightening bolts and nuts. We also have ratchet straps for like say attaching a ladder to the top of your truck. So that way it holds it really tight because mechanically it cannot be loosened unless you release the mechanical, um, the, the, the mechanical system which holds it in place. And so by ratcheting up, because it involves a gear with teeth on it, it, inc it implies incremental increases, incremental increases, but they also can't be undone. And so it's only in one direction going upwards. It has that sort of click, click, click sound, but then also the visual idea of getting tighter and tighter and tighter. Okay, so they're escalating those tensions between US and China from the South China Sea to trade policies and now spies. Ooh, tales of espionage always pique my interest. All right, us, the U.S., um, shut down the consulate in Houston. I'm not exactly sure why Houston. Nobody is really so sure about what's going on here. And so this move, this action, is drawing questions. And remember, with draw, it's not about creating a picture. It's about pulling. It draws attention, draws concerns, draws questions about the motives behind it. And so why? Really, why did we close it? And the Houston one of all, why not the San Francisco one? Why not a different one? Why Houston? Why Texas? Are there a lot of Chinese people there? Does it have adverse effects? Or are we just trying to protect the poor people from the COVID, which is escalating rapidly in Texas, with Houston being the hotspot? All right. Sorry, my brain fart is... Um, impeding our progress here, but he's in crisis mode amid turmoil over Trump's re-election campaign. Turmoil is confusion, but also um, unrest. It, it implies that things have been shaken up and everything's going here and there and we don't know what's going on. Just like a country could be in turmoil after uh, a coup d'etat and the government has been deposed, the government has been toppled, and there's a struggle for power and it's a country in turmoil or the markets are in turmoil after some sort of um, crisis. Unrest and confusion, nobody knows really what's going on, no sense of order, a bit of chaos and confusion. Turmoil, to be in a state of turmoil. We don't like that. 
we like things to just be nice and organized and smooth sailing. So, ah, the US is on track, much like a train is on the tracks going in that direction. It's on track to hit 1 million new cases in two weeks. <laughs> uh, that's disgusting and very unfortunate. It's reached the tipping point where there's almost not much we can do at this point. Um, they're just kind of stuck with it. To be on track to do something, yeah? And it means that you are moving in that direction and uh, it would be difficult to move you or change your course because when you're on the tracks, you're on the tracks. If you derail a train, it takes... Derail is some vocab from the other day, mind you. To derail a train takes a large amount of force or action to topple the train from the tracks and cause it to move in a different direction. Well, it's gonna take an act of God to stop it. Don't be fooled, don't be tricked, don't be deceived. Yeah, don't be hoodwinked, don't be bamboozled. Um, there is no new Trump on coronavirus. Just because he's made a couple public displays of wearing a mask doesn't mean that he has changed his stance or his position, in fact. And so don't be fooled, don't be tricked, don't be deceived. It's really just the same old orange guy. Moving on. Coronavirus shrinks the Australian economy by close to 5% of gross domestic product. And so, yes, their economy in Australia is contracting. It is shrinking, much like a shirt. If you put it in the dryer for too long, it will become smaller. Moving on to some weird celebrity news. Kim and Kanye. Kim Kardashian is addressing. She addresses Kanye West's mental health. And so she's wondering if he's exploding or imploding. I don't know. I haven't read the article. I've got better things to do with my time. But to address something means to publicly speak about it so we can often um, or take action towards it because we can address a problem, much like we can also address an audience. Um, when students graduate from university, often they get some celebrity or tech or business person to come and like Steve Jobs, famous Stanford commencement address as this, to the graduating class. Moving on. We've had it once or twice before, but I love this word to pedal, and we're not talking about riding a bicycle, nor the little things on a flower, the petals of a flower. This is to pedal, and <laughs> it means to sell. And often back in the day, you had guys that would travel around the country peddling different tonics and elixirs to solve the illnesses of your stomach or cause or alleviate the symptoms of arthritis and so on and so to pedal originally meant to travel around and try to sell something but these guys we called them snake oil salesmen because it was these magical potions that had very little if any medical um effects whatsoever they would sit there and come on ladies and gentlemen step right up here you go here you go and so it means to actively promote something either a product that you're selling or an idea that you're selling yeah and that um, themes of chaos america is descending through the in the downward spiral into chaos and only I can save you. And so he's peddling these dark and dangerous ideas to the American public. Thankfully, the vast majority of the public, and even less than before, they're not buying it. They can see through his little ploy. Recycling, recycling. Unacceptably obtuse, a Russian law, Russian, Republican. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, when I'm back here, I'm far away from the screen, and I couldn't remember what it said. I just saw the big R and an N, and so my mind just connected the dots. And, uh, yeah, well, a Republican lawmaker slams, of course, as usual. Slams means to criticize in a very um, strong fashion. His remark, his comment, as unacceptably obtuse. Now, obtuse originally comes from geometry, and so here we've got a right angle. That's... 90 degrees. If it's less than 90 degrees, then it is an acute angle. It's not a cute angle, it's an acute angle. Though they are adorable, aren't they? But then if the angle is more than 90 degrees and less than 180, we say the angle is obtuse. And so there's a little geometry lesson for you. However, when we're talking about remarks and the way that people speak and or their actions, it means that it is uninformed and or unacceptable, insensitive, unacceptably insensitive or unacceptably obtuse. 
Hey, thanks for the bits, Daniel. Bitting, bitting, bitting. Got some diamonds in my pocket. Well, that could be applied to nearly any of those. You could put your hand in the bag, pull out any single one of his remarks or quotes, and there's a high, distinct percentage or probability or likelihood that it would be obtuse. Let's move on. Why this country? Now, do they mean this country, meaning the US, or do they mean that country over there, that particular country? I don't really know. But they have so why do they have so many coronavirus skeptics? If you are a skeptic, it means that you are skeptical about something, which means that you don't believe it, or at least you, you're suspicious of it, you're questioning it. Now, a healthy dose, a healthy quantity of skepticism is a good thing. We shouldn't believe everything that we read, everything that we see, and that we hear. True. However, um, when there's overwhelming scientific evidence, then we should at least um, kind of buy into the idea a bit and listen to the experts. Sure, always a healthy dose of skepticism. While these people are skeptical of the coronavirus, at the same time, they have bought into <laughs> gullible and have bought into conspiracy theories. And so the things that, the more ridiculous things that they should be skeptical of, they're actually, yeah, all right. I'm gonna stick with the language, Mr. Jaynes. A record storm churns or is churning towards the Caribbean. This tropical depression is becoming, uh, might morph into a tropical storm and then onto the hurricane. But to churn, this is such a good visual word as well. It comes from butter, that's how you make butter. This is the butter churn, that dance that people would do in the nightclub. Because in the old days, they would put milk inside this thing and they go like that, churn it to disrupt it, to cause it to move around, to separate the milk from the cream. And so that is how you churned butter. And so this storm is moving, like most tropical storms, in a circular sort of fashion, like you see with hurricanes and they have the eye of the hurricane but it also implies some sort of violent motion. Yes, and it, there are countless business uses for churn. Yeah, and it could be about turnover of a product, turnover of new customers, etc. converting customers to you, for example. Very good, yes, I was staying out of the business sense and more on just the visual as applied to the headlines here. Places like Amazon, they're famous for churning through employees. They chew them up, and spit them out because they work them to the bone and to the point of collapse. They've actually literally had people collapse and not get help in their warehouses. <sighs> yeah, but okay, on to some more fun news. Ah, a siege, a hostage siege. Some people were holding other people hostage. They maybe hadn't kidnapped them and taken them to a different place. However, they were holding them, they were detaining them, maybe in some sort of building, and probably, typically, with guns. And when you hold a hostage, it's usually because you want something in exchange for those people, right? And so you're saying, I want money, or I want um, political asylum, I want this, I want that. And um, they wanted the Ukrainian president to endorse a Joaquin Phoenix film. That seems like, I'm uninformed. Call me, I plead ignorance here, but that seems like something fairly trivial for threatening people's lives. Okay, so they've got the hostages and they're holed up inside the building and then the building is surrounded by soldiers, police, the law enforcement, and they won't let them come in or out. And it is a standoff, waiting for one person to make a move, maybe some negotiation, haggling over the terms of the deal. Just like in the past, foreign armies would come and they knew that they could not successfully attack a castle. And so they would just lay siege or hold a siege where they'd camp out around the castle, wouldn't let anyone in or out, and they'd just wait for everyone inside to die of thirst or starvation or disease or just until they waved the white flag, gave up and opened the doors to the castle. Great. Moving on. We see these sometimes even in the headlines. A typo is a mistake, a typographical error. Maybe you spelled something wrong, or maybe you put things in the wrong place, you forgot a capital letter, you misused, misused some punctuation, and that is a typographical error. Now, this girl somehow avoided jail, um, but what she did is terrible, and I think she deserves to go to jail because she hurled a chair from a high-rise. Now, we're not talking about a skyscraper, but a tall, tall building. 
yeah, often for residential purposes, and she hurled a chair. Chairs are typically rather large, yeah, and so you can't just kind of casually toss a chair or even throw a chair because you probably damage your shoulder, right? And so she hurled the chair and it, it's throwing with extra force, like, yeah, like that. Just like people, you know, we hurl bodies off of bridges into the river. Just like this girl allegedly hurled a chair from a high rise. Now the idiot probably put it on social media or something like that. And so they know that it's her. How she avoided jail, um, maybe she got lucky and nobody got hurt, but that is highly irresponsible to be throwing chairs off of high-rise buildings. Or not even just throwing, but hurling implies great effort. Probably both hands, get your whole body into it. Yeah. All right, there we go. Good morning. To pin hopes on a vaccine is not the right strategy. To pin your hopes on, we've had it countless times here on the show, it's to involve, well, using a pin and then attaching something like to your shirt, yeah? Just like you pin a name tag onto your shirt at a conference so people know you know know who you are. Um, yeah, we attach our hopes to some sort of idea or concept. Um, and, well, that's not the right idea. And you shouldn't put all of your eggs in one basket or pin all of your hopes on one shirt. Um, okay, this is just an odd one. Overweight tourists prompt Venice to change gondola capacity rules. Ah, <sighs> it's just like when we used to get in a lift. An old friend of mine used to say, like, "Oh, maximum capacity eight people or four Americans." <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you jerk. Come on, I'm not that fat. But overweight, as usual, the prefix. Oh, I'm losing it off the screen there. <laughs> Overweight, the prefix over means too much, yeah? Just like overpaid. Um, overweight, meaning they weigh too much. And where are these overweight tourists from? Who knows, because nowadays we have a global obesity pan pandemic and lots of people in lots of places are overweight, if not obese. Not obtuse, but obesity and obtuse, obese and obtuse often go together. Don't ask me why, that's something to explore for another day. Um, some psychology there. To clamor for something is to loud, you're requesting and asking in a very loud, unorganized fashion. Uh, that word for some reason delights me. Um, to delight somebody means to make them very, very happy and just, oh, great. And so the world's biggest, heaviest airplane de delights plane spotters. As the people, plane enthusiasts who sit around outside airports with uh, binoculars and like, oh, Yep, that's another DC-10. Oh, there's another 737. Oh, there's a 747. Ooh, here's a special one. And so they were very happy because they saw this plane. To spot something is to see it, to look for it. Yeah, we got bird spotters, plane spotters, train spotters. Huh? You remember the movies? All right, either way, Amsterdam's prostitute hotel plan to uproot the red light district, to uproot such a good, good visually evocative term. Imagine you've got a bunch of plants. Now outside I've got some flower pots. And there's the flowers that I like, but then there's these other grasses, weeds that are growing. Weeds are undesirable plants that are growing in an area where you don't want them. And so every once in a while you have to weed them. Now if you just trim it off, just shoo, oh, I can't see my scissors. There we go. Uh, 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 just trim it, the plant will just grow back. But if you reach down and pull it up from the roots and you pull the whole plant out of there, then it's not going to grow back because you've got everything, including the roots. Yeah. And so they're going to uproot the red light district. And so they're going to rip it out from the bottom and then maybe move it somewhere or throw it away. Just like many people sadly are uprooted by war or are uprooted. Their family had lived there for thousands of years, but then they were uprooted by the war and other social or economic unrest. Ripped out of the ground. And last but not least, such a good word for screwing something up, for doing a very, very bad job. To botch something, to bungle something. We had that once on the show. To botch it, to bungle, to screw it up, to make a mess of it. And then as if moving that into a noun, it would be a fiasco, um, a tragedy, a travesty, and just uh, 
Somebody's like, oh, you want to go get some pizza? And like, well, I don't know if this place is any good. So, well, I mean, pizza, even bad pizza, even bad pizza is still okay, right? It's hard to botch a pizza. Yeah, it's hard to screw it up. It's hard to make a mistake with that. Sure, being Secretary of State is a little bit more difficult, but yes, he is screwing it up big time. Yeah, and so if you do like the show, you do like what you see, click the follow, click subscribe. Um, check us out on YouTube, click the follow and subscribe, add some comments, ask some questions, happy to respond, also on Facebook, and I mean, I keep saying it, but developing that more and more, I'm like the boy who cried wolf. And most important of all, if you do like it, the follows, the likes, the subscribes, the watch time, that helps it pass us along to a friend, spread the word, share the love, share the word, spread the love. Alright, that's it, I gotta get some more breakfast in me, and so if I don't see you sooner, 8am tomorrow, have a beautiful day, bye bye.